lead to Philip Berry. Then it's Kenneth Bately in third, Joshua Justice and Jeff Rubka rounding out the top five. Ian Gibson, Paul Jackson, Michelle Verglini, Aaron Vogelay and Caleb Pocock, the top ten. And finally, the Masters. This is probably the most interesting of the bunch because Tom Gradwell has a reasonably selling lead to Jim Brewster. Jorg Marnie in third after a run of uh, difficult results for him in the mid-season. Stephen Mitchell is in third. Brad Cathcart just behind. Then it's Gianni Longini, Kurt Nunes, Adam Bradshaw and finally Chris Morikami. And uh, well, as for the results of that qualifying session, the grid ahead of this race the safety guard gets ready to lead them off Dudu Castro is on pole position in the spec ones Marco Benero uh, not on spec two he's actually a spec one driver so he's in second so just slightly ignore that thing on our, our overlay of Andre Dantas is in third then Sjorg Marni uh, and Megan Overstreet in fourth and fifth Claudio Gardini KJ Lasky Andrea Favini Jason Green and Dan Wood And, uh, well, there we go. We're uh, about to get into this one. And uh, Charles, how are you seeing this grid stacking up? Uh, you know, I haven't haven't done it this uh, year, but I see a lot of very familiar names that I'm used to seeing up at the front. Uh, Panero, Castro, obviously very, very talented drivers. They're always up challenging for wins. Uh, Monty, Dantas, Megan Overstreet. Uh, who is just doing fantastic in the Formula Ford. I think she's pretty close to wrapping that championship up, if she hasn't already. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, you know, what we're going to see is we're going to see these cars on takeoff. You'll see them spread out as, as wide as they can and probably more than they need uh, going, <laughs> going into turn one. Uh, and uh, it's going to be very interesting. Here we go then. Green, green, green is the call from the engineer on the pit wall and it's Dudu Castro with a fantastic start tucking in behind is Marco Panera in that number 16 just behind Evandro Dantas sitting in third Megan Overstreet is under a little bit of pressure early on from KJ Lasky uh, as they go through into turn one no doing just yet Lasky will look to the inside line and try and Send a dive on Megan Overstreet. That's exactly what he does. Overstreet locks up, almost goes straight on. That allows KJ Lasky to slide through into fifth position. Now, actually, it's uh, Claudio Gardini in seventh who might be trying to attack uh, Megan Overstreet. We'll wait and see how that stacks up. There is some side by side running uh, for the minor positions at the top of your picture. Montgomery has just got past Bately. But otherwise, it's been a very, very clean start. Let's have a look at what KJ Lasky can do into the chicane. The answer is. Not much, but Charles, a reasonably uh, clean start. In fact, I'd say reasonably, a very clean start. Three wide at the back. Yeah, absolutely. A fantastic start. Uh, yeah, everybody just got single file line. Uh, not something I would, would have expected. Uh, but, yeah, there's still a few battles in the back. You know, people shuffling around trying to get a position here and there. Uh, but, as you said, just, you know, everybody lined up and just uh, started the draft train. And we'll see how that uh, how that takes us down this, uh, during this race. Here we go then, starting lap two, Dudu Castro at the lead of this mighty, mighty train. It's only actually the bottom four that aren't in this leading train. However, there's a slight breakaway from the top three. 22-2 is the uh, lap time across the line for Dudu Castro. That will obviously improve uh, as we go throughout the course of the next 40 minutes or so. We're looking focused on uh, Phil Berry. He's trying to attack the 28 car, almost collected by Kurt Nunez just behind him, but Phil... Uh, is able to march on in that spec too. So, uh, well, really, all of the drivers just talking into that slipstream again. It's a very oval sort of style circuit here in terms of how it's got so many long straights. This Netterton 200 layout that I think really what you do inside of the wiggles isn't particularly that important, Charles. It's really not. But, it, well, it is important to the fact that uh, when you get down that back straight, uh, Bentley, uh, that um, that first left-hander, it, it, you have to really time that well, uh, which is, I think, Brundle corner, uh, to get into uh, the to the right-hander. It, it requires a, a bit of finesse through there because otherwise there's a monster uh, sausage curb on the inside of the right-hander that will just take these cars and send them into space. So you have to be very careful in managing their pace through there. But yeah, the, these cars, you know, you get on the on the straightaways and, uh, you know, you just kind of run in line and, um, and wait for the first mistake to make and then you move forward from there. 
Side by side, Kurt Nunez on at the inside of Phil Berry will try and get the later of the breaking. There's a lockup in the background. That was Josh Justice. Can he get his way through? He can, Kurt Nunez. So he is through as they go through the chicanes and uh, just about able to get himself up into 12th position. There is a breakaway, though, as we started to see that train uh, that was practically 23 cars, cars long. That started to uh, slow down a little bit and wider now. Joshua Justice is on the inside line of Phil Berry. Will dive for that inside line and find his way through as well. Up into 13th position overall. Occupies second place by my reckoning inside of our Spec 2. Remember Marco Panero not in the Spec 2. He's only three tenths of a second off of the lead of the race. So keeping an eye uh, on that as well. It appears here, Charles, we've got two sort of breakaway grooves. So you've got our top three there right and up in the front and then we've got these guys and back this is york marnie he's in the master's lead uh, was in the master's lead for a moment but actually kj lasky has got to his outside line and has got through as well so york marnie loses out on that master's lead that he's held for the last four laps or so and uh, after getting that pole as well he's now under pressure uh, from megan overstreet so don't think york marnie is going to be too interested in formation flying here as we often see no, York's not one for uh, staying in line or saving fuel. We've talked to him uh, after races before, and he's pretty much uh, foot to the floor as much as he can go. Uh, so what they're going to want is they're going to stay in line. Like I said, you, you'll try and take your opportunities where you can, but the only way these cars behind will catch the cars in front is if the cars in front start doing some battling amongst themselves. As long as, those, uh, as, long as the Castro, Panero, and Data stay together, and just run uh, nose to tail. It's going to be very tough to track them down because obviously they're they were the three fastest cars uh, in qualifying, and it's like I said, it's just going to be tough to to uh, make up that ground. Over Street trying to set up a little bit of a run. That's a Murray's. It's going to get the power down very early. Indeed, York Marnie just ahead of it, and uh, York Marnie might be finding himself under a great deal of pressure here as KJ Lasky starts to run away with that Masters lead a little bit at this stage. Pit stop is going to be ahead of us. Meanwhile, we switch over uh, to the battle for the lead, three-way battle for the lead. Castro, Panero, and Dantas. This is slightly unusual for Marco Panero, who usually is at the top of the field at this stage in the running. This time he's playing a bit of a role reversal, trying to attack his sort of well, late season rival here in uh, Tuju Castro. They've been battling for race leads pretty much the last five, six races or so. They've really been fan uh, fascinating to watch. But right now, they are formation flying, and uh, it seems to be a little bit of a trend in their battles, Charles, in that they don't want to attack each other until the pit stops happen. Then the pit stops come, and it is potentially gloves off between the two of them. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, I, that is one of the things I do remember is Panero is is very conscious about uh, trying to fuel save and make his pit stop as uh, as short as he can uh, to give himself an advantage. Uh, and if he's not in the lead, uh, he's he's very content to just kind of hang there and ride and uh, save fuel behind the car in front. Maybe give him a little bit of a push here and there if he can. And then they'll save that battle for uh, the last 10 minutes of the race or so. That being said, Dudu Castro felt the need to defend slightly as they go down into turn one. Turns out he didn't actually need to defend because there was no dive uh, ever coming from Marco Panero just behind. We're looking at Jeff Richard. He's uh, trying to attack Favini. And in fact, Favini in that 27 makes a little bit of a mistake through turn one. That allows Richard to go around the outside line. Is he going to be able to find the move, though? He will. Cuts to the apex first and gets himself into ninth position. That was a very opportunistic move. I don't really think Favini saw it coming. Marnie is back past Lasky. That is for the lead of the Masters race. Jason Green has passed Overstreet for sixth position overall. So changes in this top ten on lap six of the race. We're approaching quarter race distance already. And, uh, well, we're starting to see... Interesting little battle of strategy starting to uh, form it. Indeed. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, uh, it's early. But, you know, you take the chance. Or, you know, you know, that was a great move on the outside. I'm sure he was thinking, okay, if I can get, if I can manage to stay uh, even with him on the, in, the, uh, in the hairpin, I can be, I'll be on the inside for the uh, exit of Montreal. Uh, and it worked out for him. He didn't even need that. He just was able to just make that jump. 
uh, earlier, but you know, you take these, ch- these there's, um, you know, there are mistakes that are made in the corners, and that's where they're you're seeing these passes because they're able to get better runs down these very long straights uh, and makes those little passes down for position that much easier. So KJ Lasky is back past York Marnie who has to He's take to the escape track. road and is off track, falls all the way down into what will be 11th position once he gets the throttle applied again. So that is hero to zero from Bjorg Marnie just squeezed onto that grass. I wonder if we could uh, get a replay of that. Jason Green has capitalised. He's back past KJ Lasky as is Megan Overstreet. And uh, we have got that replay uh, coming up for you. We're just being uh, spooled by uh, our producer and sorted out. But that is frustrating for Bjorg Marnie. KJ Lasky has got a lot of defensive work to do. Here is what happened then. Bjorg Marnie is uh, trying to attack KJ Lasky makes the mistake all by himself. In fact, it already got past yeah. KJ Lasky. Kane goes up the inside line and drives into him from my perspective yeah. there, Charles. <laughs> yeah, it's what it looked like. That, you know, uh, Jorg locked up uh, going into the hairpin, uh, pushed the car wide, and Kane uh, used every ounce of the track, every inch of the track to uh, to make that co- make the corner and come through. And come through. And yeah, there was a little contact there with Jorg. Uh, and, you know, we'll see what the stewards say on that one. Uh, they could say, you know, uh, once uh, Monty's off the track, it's no longer his line to have. Uh, and Lasky was, was, had every right to, to run that racing line through the corner. So we'll, we'll see if there's anything that comes to that after the race. Yeah, well, my personal opinion is that that should be on Lasky. However, we don't, I believe, have post-race uh, penalties in, in this league. Someone in chat might wish to correct me on that one. Last time this issue came up, I... I seem to remember it came down on the side of we aren't actually uh, running post-race penalties but i think just uh, a little bit of frustration for uh yes. York Barney and that that will end at that megan overstreet this is what we're looking at the battle trying to attack jason green kane jay lasky trying to make up some positions uh, as well and we talk about it so often about how aggressively you raise someone who's not in your class now obviously you gain points overall it doesn't matter uh, where you finish in class so obviously the, the winner of the spec fives uh, will sorry the winner of the there you go, i think a israel league there the winner of the uh, masters will not get scored as the winner of the masters will just score more points than anyone else in the masters it, it is an overall scoring however i always think you want to get that win anyway so you're not going to race particularly hard that being said kj lasky is uh, trying his best to pass megan overstreet here and i don't think being too nice about it yeah, these uh these you know these drivers i've i've, I've been around them enough to know that you know, they, they, they're really good about talking through issues that they've had on the track sorted out. It's a really tight-knit community. Uh, generally, there's not a lot of hard feelings. I, I, you know, obviously, uh, with a little contact like that, a little frustration uh, when you make a mistake and then you get kind of added on to by somebody else. Uh, you get a little frustrated, but I think that's generally uh, done uh, and over with pretty quickly. Uh, I haven't really seen any, any kind of major flare-ups from these uh, from these. Uh, drivers, I won't say guys, but I always remember Megan's in here. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, it's um, you know, it's a really, like I said, it's a really tight, tight knit community, uh, and they generally get things sorted out by, amongst themselves. Brad Cathcart has uh, jumped into the pits as uh, Kurt Nunez has gone off track, and he's uh, losing a couple of positions. Oh, he loses a lot of positions actually, all the way down into 18th position before he uh, gets himself back going. Adam Bradshaw has left pit lane, as has Brad Cathcart. So, obviously, issues for them at this stage in the running. Here is that gap that the top three have got to uh, the rest of the runners, just sort of outside of the uh, the top five. So your top four all the way through to I think about uh, 11th position. Here, I can't see quite who's at the very back of this train. It involves Kane J. Lasky trying to attack Megan Overstreet, though, and Kane will have a fight, uh, nice little run here as he goes down the inside. Should get ahead of Megan Overstreet here. I don't think she'll fight it particularly hard, and indeed she doesn't. That gives Kane J. Lasky the run and through. That being said, Overstreet goes back down the inside line. This is onto the straight. Overstreet will get the slipstream uh, off of Jason Green just ahead. That's a little bit of a helping hand. And considering Jason Green is off of the racing line there, I think that's an intentional little bit of a helping hand to Megan Overstreet. We'll see what the 43 can do as he goes back up the inside. That is Jeff Richard gets through on KJ Lasky. So Lasky loses a couple of positions. Overstreet Ooh. on the curb. Overstreet going to lose out completely here. It's a huge power slide. Holds onto the car. But I don't think it will be worth much because Megan Overstreet falls from outside 
or inside of the top five to outside of the top ten. Yeah, that was that was a I, I think the uh, the help on the inside going down that straight was a uh, was beneficial for her to get around Lasky, but I think the entry into that corner from that line uh, kind of got her uh, a little a little switched up, and uh, and I, that inside curb there uh, is horrible. Uh, and you can see it. Just watch how she just was, was bounced over that thing. Uh, so she's lucky to still have a car underneath her. And she can at least reset and try and uh, make up some of that time. And I think, we were talking earlier, I think Cathcart, Bradshaw, and now Wilker, I think those were all pit stops. I think those were all their, their mandatory pit stop during the race. I say mandatory, meaning they needed fuel. Um I don't think those were for uh, for damage anything. I think that was just maybe an undercut. or soon maybe the undercut might work today. Fritscher is going to go to the inside line. Kenji Lasky on the outside line. Fritscher will find his way through. There's not going to be an attack in the background from uh, Gardini. who seems to have come out of nowhere here. This all helps Jason Green, who has gained about two seconds on the uh, pack behind. So he's in no man's land completely here. 6.4 to the leading gaggle and then two seconds back to the nearest competitors behind so he can just uh, do a little bit of fuel saving all by himself for a bit and I wonder if he'll choose to drop back uh, back market traffic as well uh, 15 minutes mark in this race is going to start to play a factor Dudu Castro there in that 73 he's going to have to try and get around the 309 309 as I look through my timing screen is uh, all right at the back isn't it is that Alan McCain that's I believe no it's not it's uh, Jeff Rubka, thank you very much. Yep. There you go. So they've passed a few back markers already. Uh, Kurt Nunez has jumped a bit late as well, by the way. He's going to... Uh, I wouldn't expect that to be a scheduled stop hit. No blue flags in this league, so we'll see if uh, Dudu Castro can get through without losing too much time. Might actually allow Marco Bonero to uh, have a little bit of a battle. Will it allow Avandro Dantas to try and get through? He's certainly going to give it a go. Here goes Marco Bonero trying to attack that number 73 of Dudu Castro. Backs out of it completely. And that, I think, is pretty indicative of how they want to run this race. I think you're absolutely right. I think it's just that we're going to ride in line. We're going to stay. We're going to stay where we are until we get to the pit stop. We'll settle this on the last two or three laps of the race. And a dangerous way to run it, I think. I <laughs> always think you want to be in the lead as long as you can. But obviously, pit stop strategy is a huge, huge factor in this league it's something that we're also seeing uh, here amongst these guys not really wanting to battle each other too much and in fact i think if you look back at most of the things that have happened it have, they have stemmed from mistakes that being said i think kj lasky will fancy uh, his chances at leading this train for a little bit of course they've got cars to catch up to will lasky bump draft down the straight what he's doing right now will he go for the move though bump drafting that number 43 and then backs out very early making sure that he is the earliest on the brakes through that corner. Fritscher is feathering the brake as he goes to the exit, just trying to make sure he doesn't run wide there. That cost him a little bit of time. But again, when you're doing this weird game of running line of stern, you don't really care about losing a couple of tenths of a second. At the end of the day, it's not going to have too much of an effect. That being said, Ian Gibson, I see on my events page here, has uh, crashed. So it will be interesting to see what's gone on there. I don't see him coming back onto the track, but I also don't see him losing any positions. So, I don't know. We'll wait and see what's happened there. Yeah, we'll have to, yeah maybe that's just uh, a lag or something. I'm not really sure. So, uh... Ever, I think, that... There? As we see, we're back on to uh, Kane Lasky. Uh, he's running P6. Uh, right behind Fritcher, who I think I'm going to guess is a Richard Petty fan with the uh, the baby blue number 43. Um, just just a wild guess, but we'll see as we see Dan Wood coming into the pits. I think these are the early stops uh, we'll see uh, with Wood, uh, Nunez, Baglini, Baglini uh, coming in. We only have a few cars that will try to undercut strategy uh, to see if that works. Uh, I think that just happens to be one of them. I think as uh, just from what I remember from about the 11 minute mark to about the 31 minute mark is in, anywhere in there. Uh, my guess is you'll see the top three Castro, Panera, and Dantas stay out as long as they possibly can um, and uh, try and uh, 
make as much ground up on, on the uh, on the uh, cars behind as they can before they come into the pits and make those really really quick pit stops um, at, in, the, in the last uh, 12 or 13 minutes of the race. I, I would say even less than that. I think Castro, Pereira, and Dantas will be wanting to uh, well, eye up probably 30 minutes plus as their their pit window. They want to be running out of the pits probably six six minutes or so at most. That's what they usually do, and this isn't a particularly high uh, fuel consuming track. You wouldn't think lots of full throttle zones, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're uh, consuming a lot of fuel. I would imagine there is uh, I'm going to say a battle further ahead, but there isn't. That's just uh, a lapping maneuver taking place. This is uh, a train that is currently being led by Jeff Fritcher in that 43, and he's breaking away a little bit. I also wanted to draw your attention uh, to the fact that Rondro Dantas is 5.2 seconds behind Marco Panero. So that top three train has turned into a top two train, and, and Rondro Dantas now falling into the clutches of Jason Green. Not by a lot, though, because it's still 7.2 seconds. Uh, the gap, I believe, actually, that makes it about two seconds, the gap. So there is Rondro Dantas, and you can see the cars behind that are uh, giving chase. Where is Jason Green? It's not too far behind, so it is only about two seconds between the two of them. So that gives Jason Green a fantastic opportunity of getting a podium here in this race. He's got to bide his time, perhaps think about pit stops more than anything, because that is the, as we've mentioned in this broadcast, that is the main delta that you can you can gain. You can, either, you can gain so much time in the pit stops that you won't be gaining back out on the track. So you don't necessarily want to be pushing this car to its max just yet. Wait a little bit of time. If you've got the better pace, naturally, you've got the better pace. But I think Jason Green is smart here and will, will run this race well. Absolutely. Yeah, I think, uh, obviously, I think Dantas may have made a, a slight error. Uh, once, you know, you lose a second, you're out of the draft of the two Castro cars in front. And uh, Marco Panero are uh, right next to each other. Not much to, uh, not much to speak of there. These two have been running line of stunt pretty much all the way throughout this race. They have, however, Charles, not actually got any company now. So I suggest that if there was going to be any time to have gloves off before the pit stops, it's, it's now. It, yeah, it would be. It would be. This would be the time to do it if you were going to make a move and try and do like that. We've front. got a little bit of a, an issue hearing Charles here. Uh, so we'll, uh, I don't believe it's on my end. So we'll just press on it in, uh, in this one. As I hear something in my ear there for a, uh, a second. And, uh, we'll, we'll just press on. 20 minutes into this race, we've got 19 to go. And, uh, well, it's uh, four tenths of a second. I'm slightly confused. I did have my Discord pop up that I was really, uh, really lagging there for a moment, but we're okay. I think we're okay. Charles Beauchamp, can you, can you hear me? I can hear you fine, Tom. Can you hear me? Okay. I can't hear Charles. Charles can hear me. Joshua can hear Charles. There we go. That's all a little bit confusing. KJ Lasky is uh, is on the inside. What I think I'm going to do, uh, gents, I'm going to jump out a second of the call, and I'll, I'll jump back in a second and just make sure that's uh, okay. All right, so we'll we'll continue here with Lasky and P5, and uh, we'll see if Tom gets his uh, his uh, audio issues sorted. Uh, as we see Monty and Overstreet, looks like they're taking their pit stops. I do agree with Tom, though. I think that the later these two, the two leaders uh, will stay out there, and they'll well, if they're going to battle now, will be the time. If not, I think Panero, as I've seen before, is just content to just ride in P2 and uh, and stay there, conserve his fuel. Uh, try and make that pit stop short. And yeah, they'll go as late as they can. I, I, you know, uh, seven minutes uh, may be the number. Um, it's going to be within the last 10, though, I think. So it wouldn't surprise me if they stay out there as long as they possibly can. As, I'm not really sure about the fuel number, so I wish I could give you some really good data on that. As we see Favini running in P8, spec two class. I'm sorry, spec one class, my mistake. Um, it's about 12 and a half seconds off the lead. He's in a group. He's in this battle here with uh, Lasky, Fritcher, uh, Gardini. And a, yep, the group of four um, running from fifth into it to eighth. Let's get a look at Brad Gold, who's back there with Jim Brewster. 
a little two-man battle there. Uh, this is the uh, in the Masters class. Uh, and oh well, Masters and Spec One, as we see, uh, with Booster being a Masters driver. I think with Hexy in the top, in one of the top drivers in Masters and the overall championship for this year, um, or this season, I should say. Tom, have you got us? Can you hear us? I, I have got you, Charles, finally, awesome. and to be honest with you, I don't think I needed to be the call at all, because I started being able to hear you <laughs> towards the end, but thank you for bearing with me, uh, no, everyone, no my audio just suddenly cutting out for a moment there, creates a bit of an awkward moment. Bradford Gould is uh, on the inside line, trying to find his way through on Jim Brewster, and he's going to do exactly that as they hit the breaking zone for Brundle Corner, they will get through Bradford Gould, and I think he'll be happy with uh, that one. I, I should probably... Uh, get to talking about the lovely race voice which are our, uh, our sponsors here uh, in the SRF weekend warriors I haven't actually uh, been given their uh, their their proper sponsor read so I, I will just tell you to uh, go out and, and have a look at racevoice.com they offer some uh, fantastic little insights into the world of sim racing a nice uh, little I, I believe crew chief-esque tool that you can uh, you can use there. So racevoice.com supporting the SRF Weekend Warriors. And uh, in fact, I found the sponsor read, so I can tell you they've got 16 different notifications. Upshift, downshift, over rev alert, corner entry, corner turning, corner exit, immediate feedback on vehicle performance. So make sure you go and visit racevoice.com. I wonder if any of these drivers are using it. KJ Lasky sitting in fifth position. However, he is under pressure from Jeff Fritscher. In at that 43, Jeff is going to try and uh, well, get his way through. However, Kane J. Lasky holding firm up and down race for Kane J. Lasky has run uh, as low as I think about eighth, but also now running back up in the top five. Yeah, he's yeah, having a really good run. He's been very consistent. Um, as you can see, he's in this battle here. Lasky, Fritcher, Gardini, Flavini uh, running pretty much nose to tail. They're kind of the, I guess, the second big group of cars. Uh, you know, obviously we've got the two up front with Dodd, Haas, and Green. Looks like Green is starting to close that gap down, so that may be another two-man battle uh, before we get into our pit stops. So it would be interesting to see if he can tighten that up uh, beyond that second and a half he's behind. And... Uh... Well, we can have a look at the lap times between these drivers. It's actually Megan Street, who's running in 16th at the moment, has the fastest lap time of the day, a 118.3. Expected that 22 that was being run earlier to definitely decrease. That's exactly what has happened here. And obviously now drivers down in the 18th. Seeing Jeff Fritscher doing all of the uh, bump drafting here. Will he go to the inside into Brundle Corner? He won't. Almost collects the back of uh, K&J Lasky, but in the end is going to uh, stay line of stern. Now dives to the inside line. That should be a move. Jeff Richard does exactly that. Capitalised on a slight mistake, I think, from K&J Lasky there. And, uh, well, you can see that it is a very busy day for Jeff Richard. Up seven positions off of the start. The highest position gainer, though, is actually uh, Fulbolt sitting in the Masters down uh, in 15. Ten positions he's gained uh, throughout the course of this race. Let's ride on board for a moment. As we see, actually, ignore that because Castro and Panero just battled for the lead of the race for a moment. That's unusual. <laughs> yep, saw, the, saw the, the change on the timing tower there, and it's like, okay. So it looks like maybe Panero dove to the inside but uh, or uh, or dove the outside, but Castro was able to uh, hold the position. Just a little late breaking. But, yeah, it was, uh, Lasky looked like he caught that uh, sausage curb on the inside there with his right rear, just kind of bounced the car, got, him, got the car unsettled. And um, and couldn't uh, quite uh, couldn't quite hang on to it. Was able to allow um, Fritcher around. So we see the replay here, the battle for the lead. So Panero was uh, going to go to the outside line. Did that? Not able to get through though. Obviously, all the way around the outside line, and just not able to find the braking performance in that race car. Very difficult to uh, make a move there. And I think that was the end of it as well, wasn't it? It was. So. Yep, pretty much. Just like an overspeed, kind of uh, overspeed moment there for Panera. Oh, as we see this, as we see, oh, oh Castro nice win the pits. Yep. Castro win the pits. Early. That's early from uh, Dudu Castro. Slightly surprising, actually. And he'll come right out into traffic. So 
perhaps not the greatest of decisions to pit this early for Duda Castro. Though I speak very early indeed. We'll see if uh, that is actually going to uh, have an effect negatively on him. Marco Panera then leads here as he did for much of the race last weekend in uh, Spartan Aston actually for much of the season. Marco Panera has uh, won every single race but three. I count on my uh, results here. That is an unbelievable run for him. And uh, well, it looks to continue here in Snetterton. All he needs, remember, is three tenths of a second over this little mini stint, the back end of his first stint of the race, over uh, the car behind, which will be uh, Dudu Castro. This is the battle continuing. KJ Lasky this time behind Jeff Fritsch. Fourth position in this battle is four now, of course, with Dudu Castro uh, coming out of the pits. He's not in traffic, by the way, because he's managed to get ahead of uh, Gibson and is in eighth. Pretty far behind anyone else on this grid. We've got 11 minutes to go in uh, this one. All to play for. I said it was early, Charles. What are your yeah. thoughts? As Panera's into the pits as well. As Panera's into the pits. I, th I think, uh, I think um, Castro may have had to come in, judging by the fact that he came in a lap earlier than Panero. I'm guessing he came in because he, he's been leading the race, so he's been burning more fuel uh, than the cars behind. So kind of makes sense. He came in uh, when he needed to, and now uh, Panero was able to go an extra lap because he's been behind saving fuel uh, for most of the race. And we'll see where this, uh, where this all shakes out uh, as we come through. So Dudu Castro is there in sixth position. Will he get through? On Marco Panero, by the looks of things, he won't. So Panero wow. has gained. Oh wow! How? That's was, five seconds. It was it was three and a half seconds on the stoppage time in the pits for fuel. Uh, that's it was Panero with a nine, basically a nine second flat stop, uh, and Dudu Castro with a twelve and a half second stop. So there's three and a half seconds of time gained just on the pit stop. It's unbelievable, and. Uh, well, that is what Marco Panero does. I can't it, it, quite believe he's gained that much time again. Well, it, it makes me wonder, because I've seen this before with Panero, uh, and he'll, t he'll be the first to tell you he gambles a little bit on fuel strategy. He, he was he was, it, he was was two seconds lap, or two seconds faster than everybody else who's been in the pits. So I think he's, he's thinking that this is going to go one lap less than it, that everybody else is thinking or everybody else is just playing it safe and he's cutting it close. So we'll but see how this is going to shake out. Of course, he has the, the, the ability to control that as well. If you think back to uh, Brazil, when we had that finish that was actually controlled by, or Fuji as well, controlled by the leader who slowed down to make sure they got that less one less lap in. That would right. be interesting. Out of the pits, Jeff Fritscher is uh, falling behind, is he? Uh, interesting to see what happens here it reminds me almost of an indy car race where you think you've got a hold on pit stop strategy and where everyone is uh, is going that all of a sudden they do actually pit and it all gets thrown out the window because overstreet suddenly up into the top 10 and she's now chasing down jeff Fritscher, who is finding himself behind gardini dantas and green york marnie up into 10th this is on megan overstreet it's a brave dive it is a dive for a man who is having a very difficult afternoon, Jorg Marni saving face and actually getting himself up into the top ten spots. Yeah, he's uh, yeah he's trying, he's doing his best to try and make up his uh, make up the make up the time uh, that he lost with a couple of a uh, couple of bad corners and uh, so we'll see if it's going to work out for him. If he can hang on to that, um, he he'll he'll give it his all, but he'll, he'll be able to race it clean. So it'll be fun to uh, watch to see if he can progress. As they're still. Uh, Lasky and Favini in the pits now, so I think there's only Radford Gold is, seems to be the last person to pit, and he's in the pits now, so I think that's that's everybody cycled through. And uh, once everyone is out of pit exit, we'll see exactly how that has uh, stacked up by the looks of things. Favini and Lasky are going to get ahead of the cars, are they? Fritscher is uh, on that outside. Fritscher's under pressure as well from Gardini. Gardini will actually find his way through on Jeff Fritsch, but I think he's in seventh position. He will. So Favini finds himself into sixth. Lasky secures what should be an easy top five here now. So I think he'll be happy with that, with the uh, pit racing, or the pit stop strategy. 
So with seven minutes to go in this race, it is seven minutes to go in this race indeed, it uh, should actually be a pretty decided contest here, which gives us a chance to shout out our uh, other sponsor, Apex Racing Academy here. 29 data packs of setups, track guides integrated with VRS and weekly group coaching sessions on Apex Racing Academy, supporter of the series and of course, one of our many uh, wings of the Apex Racing UK company. And uh, we'll go and check that out to improve your driving on the sim. I know for sure I could do with an improvement in my driving on this sim, Charles. <laughs> oh, I absolutely could. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Last, he's got that second and a half, almost, well, it's actually two seconds over Fritcher uh, in P6, but then. You know, Lasky's kind of out there by himself, but you've got a group of one, two, three, four, five cars, Fritcher, Favini, Gardini, Monty, and Overstreet. They're about three seconds from, from front to back. Uh, so if they get this, if they get lined up, it's possible they might can use the draft to, to make up that time. We'll have to see. Yeah, that would be the only way, obviously, for them to, uh, to challenge is they're just going to have to work together and, and try and make up that time to get up to Lasky. To make that a battle, but looks as if, as we see Favini going by Fr Fritcher uh, on the timing tower, uh, it's going to be very. It's going to be. It's going to be hard. It's two seconds with five, six minutes left. Uh, it's going to be very tough to make up that time unless Lasky makes a mistake. As we see the replay here with Favini, it's like they're going down into the hairpin, and yeah, it looks like a lockup from Fritcher takes him wide. Gets him offline, gets wide coming out of Montreal, uh, and that was a fairly easy pass for me. He just had to just kind of stay out of the way, uh, so it was nicely done by him. Overstreet running in the uh, top ten. Just saw a, a clip of that. Now battle for the podium positions. This is Jason Green in that 160 car in third position. Might get a little bit worse for him here as Evandro Dantas is trying to attack him. Dantas has occupied the podium for most of the day. Jason Green got past him, and Jason Green, for the time being, days past him. Bradshaw has made a mistake. He's fallen down uh, a couple of positions. He was off the track for five seconds there, uh, Adam Bradshaw. So that's uh, perhaps what happened to him. Now, as they go down onto the back straight of this Netherton circuit, we'll see uh, if there's any slipstream to play for, or play with, for uh, Evandro Dantas as he's uh, trying to get his podium spot back. Dudu Castro. But he hasn't caught up to the lead of the race. He won't catch up to the lead of the race with 5.7 seconds uh, to try and grind through. But he has got past some uh, back market traffic. So he can at least say that he's going to secure this second position. I'm sure his time uh, to win will come. Despite a plethora of second place finishes for Dudu Castro. Hasn't actually won a race yet this season. Which is uh, well going to be mighty, mighty frustration for him. I'm sure his time will come. I'll have to come next week now, of course. The last race of this season. Dantas is on the outside line of Green. We'll try and get a switch back. Perhaps it won't quite be found for him now, though. Has a fantastic opportunity and a wonderful little run out of that final corner of Murray's. Will he get to the inside line? This is for the podium positions. Avadro Dantas gloves up now. No fuel saving involved in this one. Goes to the inside line. Gets himself back into the podium positions that Jason Green was fighting so hard for. Not over yet, though, Charles. Charles, no, no, not I don't know why all. I made your name French there for a moment. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. I think actually my name is French, but that's that's okay too. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's not over yet. That's like obviously, with these long straightaways, you get a good get a good run uh, out of the corner. Uh, Green can absolutely take that spot back with probably two laps left. Uh, I would guess. Um, I do see the gap from uh, Panero to Castro getting a little closer i think it's dropped about a half second so makes me wonder if panero is doing a little fuel saving uh, up front now that he's got that nice little gap uh, he can afford to do a little lift and coast uh, to try and make sure that he gets it to the end of the race well this is battle going on for 15th position gianni lanchini under pressure they're gonna go very wide as they run into Brundle Corner on the inside line. Oh, my oh word, my Jim God. Bruce has got a view of this. That is uh, very, very awkward indeed. And uh, well, Langini is uh, in 14th position. And that's pretty much all that happens from that 
but Joshua Justice comes out of it unscathed as well. Only just though, with uh, two minutes to go in the race. Will we get one more lap in? So here, where's our race leader right now? I can't quite figure that out. They should be coming on to start their final lap next time by, I think, or this time by, I should say. Well, be pretty close. I'm not really sure, but I, yeah, we'd have to see where they are. He's coming through uh, uh, in the bomb hole now. Uh, so he's on the back uh, back third of the circuit. As we see Castro, it's the gap's down to 4.7. So I definitely think Panero is trying to stretch that fuel for as long as he can. I, do, I will go back a season. Uh, we, I, I have seen Panero. The reason I say this and I kind of harp on it a little bit is he was leading a race by I want to say 10 seconds at Brands Hatch. Did a short, did a short fuel, uh, ran out of fuel on the last lap. It would have should have been an easy, easy victory. I think he ended up about 15th or something like that uh, as he just kind of coasted across the start finish line. So it's 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 happened before. So I just want to kind of keep that out. And I, as I, you know, as we see uh, the gap now is under four seconds. And, and the Dontrois. <laughs> back by green again. They're still swapping that position back and forth. And this time it's on the final lap of the race. So Avantra Dantas gets himself into prime position to come home with a podium. And I don't think Jason Green is going to have too much he is able to say about it. Never mind uh, anything he can say about it. Here is uh, York Marnie, ninth position. Good recovery from him as Jeff Fritscher uh, to try and get past. Jeff himself is uh, trying to get past Claudio Gardini and of course Andrea Favini after a uh, well, very roller coaster type ride for him. Just ahead I can see uh, Gardini trying to get past Favini himself. This should be the final lap of the race. We've got 15 seconds to go before the checker flag will fly on the outside line then is Gardini in the 33. Will he get ahead into Brundle Corner? This is for thick sixth position and he will. So that's a spot made up for Claudio Gardini and I think he'll be pretty happy with that what can Jeff Fritsch do is he's not quite able to dive up to the inside line we've got the checker flag flying so I think Marco Panero has indeed won at this race he does cross the line now there he is Marco Panero puts one hand on the championship I think he's already wrapped it up with a race to go Dudu Castro crosses the line into second position for frustration for him not able to go that one step extra so far this season here is a bit of a drag race to the line then Jeff Fritsch will try and make up what positions he can what could York Martin do in the background as they cross the line there is indeed no change for the position once it's all said and done and the top 10 sorts itself out but Charles that was a very entertaining race of strategies I think predominantly absolutely I think that was a th the thinking man's race for sure uh uh, just, uh, you know, playing the fuel strategy or fuel mileage game, uh, getting that short pit stop, getting out front. Panero did a great job, managed it uh, expertly, uh, takes the win uh, six in a row. <laughs> so uh, not to be not unexpected that he was going to be somewhere up around the sharp end. Uh, but, yeah, great race. Uh, still battles all over the track, which is what we always love to see with SRF. Yes, and uh, we'll get your results to you in just a moment's time. We're waiting for them to properly build and we'll, we'll take you through. And then we'll also talk to a, uh, a couple of our drivers as uh, well, giving in a moment. We uh, have to wait for, first of all, everyone to cross the line. And then second of all, this uh, system to sort themselves out. Here we go. So Marco Bonero wins. Dudu Castro in second. Avandra Dantas rounds out the podium. Jason Green in fourth. Can Jay Lasky taking home. The Masters win. Claudio Gardini wins in the spec twos. Andrea Favini, Jeff Fritscher, York Marnie, and Megan Ostreet, your top ten. And it's Dan Woodfield, Barry Bradford, Gould, Gianni Langini, and Joshua Justice. Jim Brewster in 16th. Ian Gibson, Nunez, Montgomery, and Volbot, the top 20. Only 27 on the grid today. It is Brad Cathcart in 21st. Tom Gradwell, 22nd. Then it's Ken Bately, Jeff Wilker, Adam Bradshaw. All of these guys are lapped down, by the way. Michelle Faglini, and your only retirement from the race, Alan McKay. So we have got uh, an interview uh, up, and uh, Charles, I believe, as uh, Tim would say, you've been able to grab Jim Brewster. Absolutely. Jim, uh, congratulations. Good race from you. Uh, uh, how, how did your race go in your eyes? Yeah, it, was, it, was, it was pretty quiet. You know, this place is really tricky, but nothing compared to, you know, we ran Vs and uh, 
Fords over Detroit, the concrete canyon. So we all were like breathing a, a, a breath of fresh air with all this grass to spin into and no concrete. Uh, but I chased uh, my buddy Chris McGarney the first half of the race, and then Joshua Justice the second half of the race, and just, uh, you know, try to keep pace and uh, hope my uh, fellow other masters weren't as lucky. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, yeah, you know, going back and, and trying to run Detroit, I'd take this track every day. Uh, twice on Sunday. You see how unpopular it is, though. You know, there was nobody in the officials here this week. Yeah. But uh, uh, anyway. It's, it's odd. Uh, yeah. So anyway, hey, congr congratulations. Uh, yeah, thank race. you much. Yes, sir. That was uh, Jim Brewster. Uh, about time as well. We, we drag up your money uh, for a quick chat. York, welcome uh, along to the, uh, the broadcast. First mm. and foremost, how are you? And second of all, that was a very chaotic race, and I think you didn't quite get what you wanted from it, but it was a, a good recovery. Uh, actually, I'm doing good, first of all. Uh, it was weekend, weekend over. Uh, races are, yeah, so, so, la, la. Uh, yes, it was definitely chaotic. <laughs> like I said last week, it's, uh, you know, I'm racing here. Look what's happening, and you saw what's happening. <laughs> And, uh, well, Snet is an, an interesting track. How does it stack up in terms of a challenge compared to the other ones that we've, we've seen this season? Uh, it's especially the first hairpin. It's quite difficult because I, I knew I'm quite well on the brakes there. But several times the guys ahead of me were braking so early I had to lock up my tires. Uh, the last time I almost crashed out Megan. And, um, yeah, it was kind of weird right, uh, driving on the track. Um, I didn't feel actually so racy today, so I just hope I don't crash out anybody. So that so goal achieved, I would say. Thank you, York, for joining us, and we'll uh, we'll speak to you next week. Yeah, all right. Thanks a lot, guys. Good night. And uh, oh, time for uh, one more or two. I think we'll go two more. Uh, Charles, uh, we'll grab uh, someone into the box. I hope if you managed to. Yeah, have a Jason, Jason Green uh, ended up uh, P4, uh, so congratulations! A uh, great race on your part. Uh, probably, probably good battle there at the end. You'd probably like another straightaway to get that spot back from uh, from Dantas, I'm sure. Yeah, um, yeah, it was a good, it was a good battle. Um, just uh, yeah, being a mistake uh, or a couple of mistakes really uh, on that last lap, trying to get past um, and then repass them. So. Uh, but yeah, overall it was um, it was a good race. I I didn't uh, think getting up into fourth was possible just because I was start, starting so far back. Um, but yeah, everything worked out. So what uh, you know we're asking guys what you think about the track. Um, obviously, not a lot of uh, doesn't get a lot of uh, usage in eye racing. So uh, how much time did you put into uh, kind of prepping for the race? Oh yeah, I did a lot, bunch of practice this week, and I, I really enjoy this track. Um, it's uh, super challenging, um, so it's um, you have to, yeah. I mean, uh, especially the the last sector with all of those kind of unique corners, you don't really get to drive any routes. So it's, um, yeah, I, I I really enjoy it. It's a it's a challenge. All right. Well, congratulations on your uh, uh, P four. Thanks, y'all. Yep. Thank you, uh, Jason, for joining us and uh, well one more i think we can squeeze it in i believe we're dragging phil berry uh, up into the box phil welcome uh, along to the stream look like a pretty interesting run today 12th in the end for yourself how did it go um i actually had the best race of the week here today um one mistake and that was it and that was the second lap so second last lap but um I was expecting Alan to come and kick my butt like he usually does, but didn't show. Well, he joined, I, I, but um, yeah. I suppose you can call it a success then, uh, can't you? Well, that, that's yeah. fantastic. Uh, one more race to go in this season. How overall do you think it's panned out for you? Um, oh, I've had some disasters there just because of incidents with you know other people and my own mistakes but um i'm actually looking forward to Oran park I, I love the place it's a fantastic little track to race yeah track i i think i must have driven in official races but apart from that i've not done much of that track so i'm excited to see how uh, how how these stack up here 
Uh, well, I'll, I'll ask one more question then. How did you find the, the traffic today? Because obviously Snitterton is quite a small track. I imagine it was... I... A it was a bit of a train at first, but um, um, we sort of fell off the back of the pack and... When uh, Kurt had a had a bit of a lose in front of me, I, I lost uh, lost a draft to him. So I thought, I'll, that's when I'll I'll jump in a pit and and then just pretty much circulate it from there. Um, yeah, if you if you don't have the draft here, it's uh, you you sort of nowhere. Um, and it's a tough track to pass on too. Yes, well, uh, Phil, thank you very much for joining me, and uh, we'll speak to you soon. Thank you. See you later. And, uh, well, that's just about all we've got time for here from the SRF Weekend Warriors. We do it all again one more time at Oran Park next weekend. Same time, same place on Apex Racing TV. Thank you uh, to Charles Beauchel for joining me. Josh Wilkie on production. We'll see you all later. Good night. Are you struggling for consistency in your sim racing? Does your I rating look like a roller coaster? If so, we have good news for you. The way to get more consistent is to first understand what you're doing differently than the professionals. And VRS is the answer. With our competitive subscription, you will have the telemetry, setups, tutorials, and everything else you need to fully analyze your driving. Our data packs and the ability to compare your driving with the best in the world will show you exactly where to adjust your inputs, change your driving line, and shave seconds off of your lap times. And our powerful and precise Direct Force Pro Wheelbase and Precision Pedals are being used by some of the world's best drivers. All these champions agree that VRS hardware is not just the best on the market, it's also priced well below the competition. So if you're looking to upgrade to direct drive and the best pedals in sim racing, VRS is your answer. If you want to get better, get faster, and make it happen sooner rather than later, you owe it to yourself to find out why so many people are switching to VRS. You'll be so glad that you did. Visit www.virtualracingschool.com and learn why the best use VRS.